Hi, welcome. My name is Melissa Evans. I'm the editor of the Long Beach Post. We are here for another one of our one o'clock live chats. And today we have Long Beach Unified School District Superintendent Chris Steinhauser. We're very grateful that he could join us this afternoon. Uh, Co-moderating with me is Mike Gardespaccio, who normally covers sports for us, for the Post and for 562 Sports. Um, but in these changing times, he has pivoted and has been covering, doing a really good job uh, keeping an eye on education and schools for us. So Mike will be asking questions, and I will also be monitoring our social media channels for your questions. So please, as we're progressing for, we'll probably go a little more than 30 minutes. I have a feeling we'll get a lot of questions on this one, but I will be monitoring your questions as you guys send them, and we'll hopefully get to as many as we can. Um, so with that, um, we'll get we'll get started. Um, I just wanted to ask. We were chatting a little bit beforehand, just about um, historically something this monumental happening. Um, Long Beach Unified is the fourth largest school district in the state, I believe, um, and this had to have been a huge logistical. Uh, feat to accomplish, clo closing schools in such a short period of time. Um, can you just talk about that, just about what the past few weeks have been like for the district? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like building a whole brand new school system. You know, um, it sort of reminds me of what happened to, to Katrina uh, in New Orleans. You know, um, they had to rebuild a whole new system in New Orleans uh, after the hurricane. So basically, when we shut down, we had to build a whole new system of learning opportunities, working with our employees, there's a whole new infrastructure. It's totally different than what we're doing now. And people forget Long Beach Unified is the largest employer in the city of Long Beach. That's right. We have 10,000 employees, 70 plus thousand students, K-12, another 5,000 in preschool. So it's, um, uh, I'm so proud of what the staff's done over the last couple of weeks to just move this ship and turn it in a complete different course. Wow. Chris, uh, yeah, I mean, under normal circumstances, how long would you estimate a change like this would take? <laughs> uh, long time, because, you know, uh, I, I've been an educator now for 38 years, and, and I love my profession, but sometimes changed, uh, adaptive change with this is adaptive change takes a little longer. You know, technical change is easy, you know, changing the rules. But when you're asking people to teach in, from their house, and you're asking kids to stay home, and you're talking about completely doing things differently, literally overnight is uh is unbelievable and i'm just amazed by the innovation by the dedication and by the professionalism of all of our employees because not only you're asking them to change but they're in an environment that is changing literally by the hour and it's very scary because families are being touched by this and then unfortunately we all know this could have a deadly outcome for individuals who who get this virus um you mentioned, uh, I'll, I'll start with this. You mentioned you guys are the largest employer in the city. Um, I think, uh, as I'm sure you guys are used to, some misinformation went around social media in the wake of, uh, of the announcement that the schools were closing about teacher pay and everything else. Um, my understanding is obviously everyone's going to keep getting paid. <laughs> but can you explain to people how that's happening? What's the mechanism by which, you know, the biggest employer in the city kind of keeps the, the wheels on the, on the track, so to speak? So when the governor made the executive order for um, uh, staying at home and being safe, in order for schools to continue to be paid, they had to do a couple things. One is that they had to continue to offer instruction. Uh, two, they had to continue to pay their, their employees. And there are certain contracts that they had to pay. So, um, so all of our, um, uh, what we would call our, our full-time equivalent or part-time equivalent employees um, are getting paid. And some of our hourly people are getting paid for a minimum set of hours. Individuals who are in our system who are not being paid are individuals who, for example, if I'm a college aide, because you, you did, you're not performing that task. So anyone who's connected to a student is getting paid because they are still um, doing the work. Uh, and the same for our classified. So our custodians, our food service workers, our, our, um, our secretaries are all being paid. Um. Let's talk first, I guess, about what you guys did from when the closure happened to now. Um, you changed the whole nutrition services department around to where they're giving out free meals to anyone, uh, not just Long Beach students, at those select schools. Um, you guys set up an infrastructure to get the Chromebooks out um, to families that needed them. 
what's that change been like? Uh, and then we'll talk about, you know, what the future is going to be uh, after that. Sure. So in the beginning for the food, um, we went to every site because we knew this was a drastic change. And, and as you well know, we give about 50,000 meals a day to our students. Uh, um, really, it's 100,000 when you look at breakfast and, and lunch. So we started that process and then we narrowed it down to where now we have about 30 plus centers that are giving food out. And the reason we narrowed it down were for two reasons. One, our food service uh, branch is not only feeding um, our students, and, 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 and other students, but they're also working with the city of Long Beach for first responders and others and, and, and feeding those individuals and some um, okay. shelters and other things. So because we have a mutual aid agreement between the two organizations. So we didn't want to burn out all of our individuals and we want to make sure that um, uh, we could do an effective job. Um, the Chromebooks, we, uh, if you may have not known, we gave about 20,000 Chromebooks out in December because we actually bought new ones. And so we gave those to students um, and then over the last week, we've given out an additional 10,000 Chromebooks. So, and we, I just got some emails today from some parents, my kid needs a Chromebook, so how do I get that? We've communicated on our home learning opportunities uh, page that parents need to contact their school if they'll set up an appointment to get a Chromebook. Next, we're gonna be working with those families that do not have internet access. So about 7% of our students do not have internet access or limited access. So we bought um, 5,000 hotspots then each hotspot can hold up to 10 devices. So it'll be like one for family. So the schools at all levels will be working with the families um, who have indicated they do not have uh, internet access and those will be deployed over the next week or so. so we're already, okay. we're already getting, <laughs> I'm gonna interject here with some live questions. As I, as I thought, we're getting a lot of questions from people. Um, and please continue to, to submit your questions. Um, will the school year be extended next year? And if not, why? Sure, so what's gonna happen, um, the, the governor has not told school districts that they'll extend the school year next year. What we are looking at right now is, um, if we're truly, if the, the order is lifted, the stay home order now, if it's lifted, let's say in June, we're looking right now at what kind of options that we can extend for the summer, um, and looking at summer school differently. We usually have summer school right in July, so maybe we use the entire summer. But if we can't lift that order, we're gonna look at options um, in the fall. We, we've always run a very robust Saturday program and after school program, at, but not at all of our schools, probably about half of them. So we already are working right now how we can offer those types of uh, learning opportunities for students. We actually have a very uh, exciting um, um, pilot that's going to launch next week, and I, I wish I could tell you more about it, but it's under wraps until it's officially launched, um, that we believe will have a huge opportunity for our young people um, working with some outside organizations that will provide some direct support instructions, for example, mathematics and other areas, so the kids can shore up those areas that they they'll, um, may be deficient in right now. If, if I can pop a question in, Melissa, I'm sure some of the live mm -hmm. questions are uh, related to what I was going to ask next, which is, um, Chris, you guys announced at the school board meeting on Wednesday that beginning April 20th, so everything that the kids have been doing from when you started home learning until April 20th is ungraded assignments. I mean, it seems to me like you're kind of testing the system, right? You're making sure the kids can get on, they can connect with their teachers. So beginning April 20th, when you guys come back from uh, the least relaxing spring break of all time, um, participation will count, assignments will be graded. Um, what is that gonna be like um, for your teachers and for your students, right? Great question. So um, everyone will know the details next week. So okay. we, we are working with teachers, we're working the State Department and the Board of Education, uh, State Board of Education just gave uh, some great guidance on um, grades and credits and so on. So for example, all the UCs and the CSUs have now agreed to accept credit for pass no pass classes because the whole idea is no kid's going to get harmed in this in this in this, this crisis. So whether I'm on the great road to graduation or I'm accepted to UC Berkeley, so what we're working with right now is getting input back from teachers. Um, uh, we're working with our staff here. We're going to be setting up um, some guidelines and some expectations for everybody. So for example, many of the high schools have gone to a block schedule where and the, there are certain two-hour blocks and then there are office hours on Fridays and so on. Um, because the, the requirement of us by the governor is that we provide instruction, we continue to communicate, um, but we don't want to stress anybody out. 
this is different. So I want to make it loud and clear to everybody. Um, none of us should expect that what we saw in our old classrooms is going to happen in our, in our, in our, our living rooms. It, it just can't. But what we have to do is we have to provide the best learning opportunities in those key areas. So we'll be giving guidance and structure to teachers, expectations to parents and to kids. I'm already getting calls from kids. What does this mean now I'm accountable? <laughs> I think that's why I'm getting calls. I need a Chromebook like ASAP. So which is good. Um, but we're going to support everyone. There's going to be a lot of journey. And the reason we did this period here was we wanted to wait to see if we were going to come back. Obviously, we're not coming back. So now we have to make sure that everyone is doing it. And it was fascinating. Within the first three days of our announcing that we're going to be closed, we had 70,000 page views of our home learning option opportunities program when it launched. That's We've never had some, such uh, data like that. You guys are in the media business now. Um, <laughs> if, if I could ask a broader follow-up to that. So when you say that stuff will be graded going from April 20th forward, the point of that is your expectation, I'm assuming the expectation of, um, of the state education department is at the end of this year, if you were in 11th grade, you're getting your credits from being in 11th grade and in September, August, whenever you start 12th grade. That's the plan is everyone will get the credit and move forward. Is that, is that, that why you're that, towards that? That is a lot of the live questions we're getting too. So, yeah. so yeah. I want students to remember, I want students to know, I've had a lot of seniors say, is this going to delay my college acceptance? No, it's not going to happen. You're in great shape. Don't worry about that. If I'm an 11th grader and I'm passed all my courses and I continue um, uh, to do that, I'll be fine. If I if we go to a no pass credit system, you know that type of program, and I don't pass the course again, I'd have to make up that course like, like any other thing would happen. We will be offering this summer, no matter what it looks like, whether it's in the buildings or online, um, a credit recovery for students like we do every year. And so, um, so the whole idea is that just like you said, learning's going on. We're going to progress, and we're going to go forth from there. Um, so. Some of the questions we're getting have to do with lunches as well, and and as well also graduation ceremonies, which I think Mike will get to in a second. Um, but as far as lunches, there's a question: Will there be an expansion of lunches provided to entire families like LAUSD? There are parents who have lost their jobs and may not be able to afford to eat, and some parents don't want to bring out all of their kids to the school to pick up food. So with the the. The guidance and the waivers from the, the USDA have allowed us to, where um, parents can come and pick up all the food. We have students right now, it could be one kid who's picking up four packets for the entire family. That's all allowable and that's happening right now. Um, we won't be expanding the programs, the, the sites right now, because again, going back to that issue that our food services are not only feeding our families, but they're working with the city and, and other organizations. Um, and so but we do want to encourage anyone who is between one and 18, everyone can get food. And so no, it's, there's no questions asked. We want you to go and it's actually going quite well. Um, but the, uh, um, again, a, one person can pick up for the whole family. Okay. Um, so Melissa just mentioned, I mean, the, what, um, what the five, six, two, what our channels have been overwhelmed by, what I'm sure you guys have been overwhelmed by is everyone's mind goes immediately to the high school seniors, right? I mean, this is, this is the time, April, May, June, that everyone remembers from being in high school, um, prom, graduation, all those senior trips. First of all, what was sort of your emotional reaction to coming to that realization yourself? And then knowing how much, you know, you guys have all been kind of feeling that and, and listening to your seniors, what are you guys thinking about right now in the early stages to try and carry forward with something? Well, you know, emotionally, it's so hard because not only being a student of the district and a parent of the uh, kids who went through the district, these are milestones. Some of our young people, they're the first in their family to graduate, you know, uh, um, high school, um, let alone college. And our kids, like I, I shared before we went online, Long Beach Unified and Elk Grove have the toughest graduation standards in the state of California. So our kids work really hard to, to mm -hmm. achieve these great, wonderful outcomes. So it just it's heart wrenching and, and it, our kids don't deserve this no one deserves this and so um but we have to keep our kids safe and our families safe so what we're doing right now we've actually had um so several meetings with um, our activity specialists who really handle the graduation ceremonies and they um are reaching out to students at the, the, all of our high schools because we want input from our kids so we're looking at a variety of things right now um uh, so We'll come back probably after spring break to let everybody know. 
uh, what's going to happen. There will be celebrations, and whether they be virtual, whether they be in August, whether they be a combination thereof, we don't know yet. But we really want the student voice to be part of this because we want them to drive this this um, this recommendation. And so we really, um, I'm very proud of our activity special and our student leaders on the campuses. And um, more to come on that one. So, but as a quick follow up, something we've heard from a lot of kids is you guys are uh, open to if the feedback leads in that direction, a physical ceremony later in the summer, if that's permitted. Absolutely. If that ends up being right. If it's totally allowable um, and, and safe, we'll look, we're looking at options. And I always remind people that we have to have plan A, B, and C, because uh, as you've listened to the experts, Dr. Fashi and others, you know, when we're allowed to come back, um, we just can't come back like we left. We just, 70,000 people can't come together because we don't want this thing to restart. So we'll do whatever is allowable and safe, um, but we are working on plan A, B, and C. Um, will the, one of the questions we've gotten, and again, we're chatting with uh, Long Beach Unified School District Superintendent Chris Steinhauser, send your questions. Um, will the cu curriculum be changed next year to include more information? I'm not worried about grades, but I'm concerned that my child knows the content. Yeah, so as I stated earlier, um, what we, plan to do this summer if we're allowed to, definitely in the fall when, when hopefully we all come back, we will be providing what I'm going to call supplemental opportunities, whether they be Saturday schools or after school tutorials or other online um, supports for our families, um, because we want to make sure that any loss of instruction or loss of skills, our uh, kids are given the opportunities to recoup those. I'll, I'll call out a couple things. Cabrillo High School has had Saturday school for years huge numbers of kids go on Saturday. And so we have Saturday school, um, I probably have about 10,000 kids on Saturday school uh, throughout the, the system. We're gonna expand that program next year. So we're actually looking right now, a setting aside resources, because um, I'd like to talk about resources later because that, mm -hmm. this is not only a public health issue, it's an economic meltdown issue. Um, but we're setting aside resources right now to ensure that our youngsters at all levels will have the support that they need. Um, yeah, I'll ask a follow up to the point you just made. Um, you've talked uh, over the last year as you're sort of moving towards retirement about thinking that one of the biggest challenges for the school district is the, the, the economy, right? I mean, that it, it's more expensive than ever to live in Long Beach, not just for your families, but for your teachers. Um, and that gap is sort of getting bigger. Um, you just mentioned it, a, a lot of your families, a lot of the people are going to be going through some real hardships. What, if anything, can you guys do? I know the district has stepped up with some of the family centers um, and tax planning stuff you guys have done to kind of provide more social services than educational services. Um, what are you thinking about in terms of uh, the district going forward in those, in those areas? You know, that's a great question because what's gonna happen is that we're, we're looking at, as right now in Long Beach and all school districts in the state, we're gonna have cuts come May. So we know the governor is gonna have to readjust the budget because as you well know, there are 10 million unemployed people as we speak, that number is gonna grow. And so um, knowing that the tax revenue won't come until July, uh, the governor won't know how much money he has to deal with. So what we're working on is how can we um, maintain our fiscal um, positive outcomes that we have in this district and do exactly what you do, talking about how do we serve our students, not on the academic side of the house, but on the social emotional side of the house. I just talked to a family yesterday where both the husband lost his job about four months ago, the wife just lost her job because of COVID-19. These, um, um, and that's, they're, they're not by themselves. So and if you remember in the Great Recession, we had numerous family members where both the husband and the wife lost their job. And so I'm desperately worried about this. The board's done a great job of setting the course for us, um, um, but it, I'm not gonna lie to anybody, it's gonna be some tough years ahead We'll, we all fare better than most districts because we've been fiscally sound and, and we're in good shape. But I'm truly worried because right now, 60% of my employees live in my district's guide, uh, boundaries and have for years. But if they can't afford to live here for whatever reason, that's not a good thing. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, I know you've talked publicly a couple of times about how emotionally affecting the Great Recession and the layoffs that you guys went through in that time um, were for you personally. And from my perspective, it seems like that's kind of been a guiding um, force for you in some of the things you guys have done um, fiscally. 
and I know you've been criticized for some of that, maybe for people feeling you were too conservative with the budget. Um, do you feel that those moves have kind of put you guys in a better position than, you know, maybe some of the neighboring school districts or, or other districts in the state will be? Oh, absolutely. Um, and I, I have taken that criticism and I, and I, and I understand where it's coming from, but I, when you go, when I had to lay off 650 people, that's the toughest thing I've had to do besides going to a student's or a uh, teacher's, you know, those are, those are the worst things. But because of our fiscal conservative activity, we are in so much better shape than everybody else. There are districts right now, for example, San Diego is, is already laying off 145 teachers as we speak for this year, not talking about any of the fiscal impact of this crisis. And this fiscal impact is gonna be at least a two year process on, on the short end. Because even if we come back when we hope to come back, the recovery won't take place until the fourth quarter or the first quarter or the second quarter of the next fiscal year. So um, my, I'm gonna work really hard with the board and staff to identify reductions that have the least impact as we speak and to go forth so that we will survive this storm. Um, how, we've, we've gotten so many questions. <laughs> I'm trying to pick, pick ones that kind of symbolize a lot of questions. Um, there's a lot of questions here about, and you already talked about this, but that no student will be punished. Um, there's questions here related to AP testing. Um, what happens if a student who had an F on the day that uh, classes abruptly end, ended? What, what will happen with that? Um, so just testing, sure. just maybe reiterate. Uh, excellent. I'll take, I'll take the students. Um, so on March 13th, we've sort of froze grades, so we know where everyone's at. So if I had an F in a class, I, I can go nowhere but up. So I can improve. So there's the, yeah. But if I don't do anything, uh, that's a problem. Okay. So you, you, it's, this is not a vacation. Uh, I, I want to remind everybody about that. The testing, AP testing, the college board came out and um, has revised the AP test. And so the kids will be allowed to take the test that they choose to. And in Long Beach, 91% of our kids take the test. It's around 14,000 tests are given in, at this time. So there are some great um, supports right now that are going on for the kids from the college board. So the, um, um, if a child a student chooses not to take the test, that's fine. They don't have to take the test. Right now, the input from our students is that the majority of them are going to continue with it. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't hit 80 to 90%. Um, they can take the test from their house. Uh, um, we are looking at... For example, if a student doesn't feel that taking the test at home is the best, you know, scenario, that we can even have that student come to our building and we can put a student, one student in each class to take the test. Because I came from a large family with five brothers. Um, can you imagine five brothers running around with me taking the test? That's not the best testing situation. So the issue is that we're going to work with families on that part. Okay. Yeah, that's not how I would want to take an AP test. No. no. <laughs> um, there is a question here related to your retirement, which we, we chatted about a little bit before, um, before we got started here. Have you plan, are you planning any changes to your retirement date? No. Um, so I announced my retirement in December. The board um, set out a great pro, uh, process to select the new superintendent. On Monday is the final stage of that process. So the, they've done a beautiful job. Um, I've made a commitment to stay on until July 31st. Uh, as I said before we came on live, my vacation plans have been canceled. Uh, um, my, my plan was to make a quiet exit out of stage left after graduation. That's not going to happen. Um, but I will be here working with the, the uh, newly appointed superintendent because that individual would start on August 1st. And I've made a commitment to the board and to the staff and I'll make the commitment to the new superintendent that um, whatever I can do um, to support that individual after I retire, I'm, I'm willing to do. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here in Long Beach. Um, I have to find a new job, uh, so, but I, I'll take at least a month off before I do that. So, Are you planning to work after retirement? Oh, absolutely. I'm, uh, I think one of the strengths that I have is to help districts uh, in the area of bringing fiscal activities together in a positive light to support students. And so I'm really concerned um, before this all happened, to be very honest with you, of the, um, the plight of many districts in the state of California. We, we, before this crisis happened, 
we have many districts, 30 to 40 of them, who are in fiscal distress in good times, and that should not happen. And so I've been blessed to, to work with wonderful people and help me to how to deploy some of these activities. So that's probably what I'll, what I'll do. And plus, I'm a huge advocate under the areas of social justice and, and making sure that every kid can go to college if he or she chooses to do so. And Long Beach has done a beautiful job in that. So how can I bring like the Long Beach College promise to other school systems and communities? Yeah, I was going to say, I think between the Long Beach College Promise and, and also the fiscal uh, underpinnings that you've had in the district, I would imagine that over the next couple of years, both of those skill sets will be in uh, high demand in California. Um, what uh, is, is, so that's your plan is sort of to move into a statewide position? Well, not a statewide. I don't, I, and I'm not running for office and I'm not going to go to the Department of Ed or any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, I will I will want to work with individual school systems or collective systems, you know, because I think we all have to think differently. And, and this crisis is going to do that, making people think outside the box, be innovative and in how we can work together. I'm blessed, you know, to have so many people. People tell me when they hate me. People tell me when they like me. Um, but one thing, even the people who don't like me will say, Chris, you're open and honest and you've been, you know, you're always transparent. And, and it's always been my opinion about the kids. Is, do you have a, is there a timeline for when the district plans to appoint a new superintendent? Is that yes, decision important? Uh, they've set aside May 6th to be the, the day to appoint. They could do it earlier if they choose to, the, uh, they be in the board. Um, but May 6th right now is the date of the next board meeting that that would happen. Okay. And um, the final interviews are on Monday. With correct. The, okay. Uh, is the district losing federal funding um, with schools out? Because I know a lot. some of that, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's tied to student attendance, correct? So, right. So what's happened right now is that we're not losing state funding. The, um, again, uh, from the governor, if we do those, um, you know, instruction, pay our employees and so on, um, our, our ADA was, is going to be averaged over the year, which is a positive. Uh, federal funding has not been impacted, um, so we're not losing federal funding. In fact, um, the federal government has extended um, uh, deadlines and um, how you have to spend your money. So, for example, um, they've given what, they're allowing you to carry over more money in the future um, mm -hmm. than you could in the past, which is a positive. And that's one tool that we're using over the next couple of years to spread the money that we're not spending right now over those next couple of years so that we can continue the services that we need. We are losing federal money in the, in, the, in, the, in the arena where they've been cutting the budgets over the last couple of years, but okay. we'll have to wait and see what happens in the future, to be honest with you. Because this stimulus package that they just gave is not going to do it. There's going to have to be more support. I'll give you an example. When we had the Great Recession, we received $108 million from the federal government over a three-year period. The stimulus package that we've just received, we, we may get about 10 or $12 million. We don't know yet. Uh, so that's one tenth, and this crisis, in my opinion, is much worse economically than the crisis of 2008. And I don't think people truly realize the impact that's going to happen. How how are teachers adjusting to this? Uh, I I teach one class at Cal State Long Beach, and and I'm and I work in a digital newsroom, and I have to say it's been it's been a big adjustment for me just teaching that one class online. How have teachers handled this? Quick transition. Um, some teachers have been had no problem because technology is their life and they know how to do all this stuff. Other teachers, um, this is a huge adaptive change for them. And that's why we took that first week off to say, we've got to get used to this. Um, our uh, professional development office has been offering daily um, workshops for teachers and literally hundreds of teachers, 500 teachers a day are going on to these workshops. I have to tell you, I'm so proud of what our teachers are doing. Um, uh, if you follow them on Twitter or Instagram, they're sharing with one another. They're doing all kinds of things. Are all of them happy? And uh, no, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not the case. But I am so proud of what they're doing and how they're supporting one another. I've tried to give the message out to everybody. Do not stress. Lower your expectations down. Because, again, what we, I did in my classroom is the, that connection with the kid and the teacher is so different than I can do what we're doing right now. So yes, we can do some teaching. It's not going to be perfect. Let our kids help us. Our kids are such great, you know, natives in this arena of the uh, of internet. But I'm very, very proud of what they've done. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously a, a, that's going to be a big adjustment for a lot of your teachers. Um, I had a question for, you know, for your teachers who are, you know, 65 or older um, or, or your staff members who are, you know, sort of due to the state guidelines under a different level of protection and stay in your house. Are you guys uh, doing anything differently for them? Or are they still working or, or what's the what's the plan with, you know, that group of people? Yeah, so what we did immediately when we got the governor's order, anyone who was 65 or older, we um, told them they had to work from home. So, and, uh, and most employees can do their work from home with a few exceptions, for example, payroll and, and, and other issues. Um, teachers are the same way. They can work from home because all teachers are working from home now. So, um, uh, and so that has gone really well. I have about 400 individuals in that category both on the classified side of the house, as well as on the certificated. So for the people who are working in, you know, who were working in office or something, are they on a leave or how do you, how do you, how do you handle that? You know, if, if they're saying that we can't come into work or, you know, so, so they, they, they're getting paid. And right now those individuals are on a, a leave uh, to do their work at home uh, under the new um, law that was passed out of Congress. It will be, um, there'll be some changes to that process, but they'll still be in paid status and they'll still be t working at home. Okay. There's a question here about um, stress reduction. What are your best stress reduction tips for LBS LBUSD students as they weather this crisis? Are there counseling options available through the district? Yeah, so on the counseling, there will be some new information being rolled out from our counselors. So our counselors will be working out, some of them have already done this, reaching out to students and to, to staff and so on. We are looking at um, various um, uh, community partners to provide support um, because there's a lot of trauma out here on a, on a whole wide range of activities. For our students, I want our students to, to do their best. I want them to work. Um, I do not want them to be um, overwhelmed. And I welcome calls to me or emails to me to saying, I'm doing more work than I did when I was, uh, and I've got those, you know? So mm -hmm. then I, I need to follow up with that because you shouldn't be doing more work than that. So we will be setting out next week um, schedules and classroom expectations so that parents and everyone understand what is expected and when it's expected. So, um, but we do not want individuals to stress. Um, so if you don't get it the first time, it's okay. It's, uh, you know, this is meant to do your best, to try your best, and we will go forth after here. Um, one thing I know the Post had gotten a lot of comments on that, um, you know, we've heard, we've had a couple parents reach out about as well is, um, obviously you have a, a, a large percentage of the district uh, has an IEP or an individualized education plan um, or in special education programs. And those don't necessarily, you know, uh, go through the computer as well. Um, you know, you're talking about some of that population. Um, what are the plans there? And I, I imagine to some extent you're kind of limited in terms of what you can do in people's houses, but do you have plans to kind of expand what you're doing for, for those kids? Yes, absolutely. So both our student populations, whether you're a general ed student or a special ed student, um, are, have resources, online packets, all that type of stuff. And there's lots of supports. Um, you're right. Uh, if my IP, if my IEP says I'm going to have occupational therapy, that can't take place over the, the internet. So we are looking at different uh, things that we'll be deploying over the next couple of weeks and so on. Um, uh, for example, we have, I just talked to an aide who is um, on uh, the students, one-on-one -on -one aide, and they're actually providing support with the teachers providing support, those types of things. So, um, uh, and the FAPE, which is a fair and appropriate education, is different when we're talking about an internet-based program than it is when it's in a, um, brick and mortar building. But you'll be hearing more coming from parents, but we welcome all those parent concerns and those topics and where we're taking each one of them and handling them um, individually as well as a whole system. It kind of sounds like we need to make sure you come back in a couple weeks, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's like everything's changing so quickly that it's yeah. like each week you're gonna have a whole new seg segment of stuff that you're rolling yeah. out. <laughs> I tell you, it's changing by the hour. It's, it's yeah. I've never seen such a, um, and again, I just wanna thank everybody uh, you know, from my food service workers to the teachers to everybody in between, staff has done a beautiful job. I mean, I mean, people are, have you seen the parades where teachers are going out to their neighborhoods? You know, the, um, you, you talk about the support on Twitter and Instagram. It's pretty amazing. And, and I think that's what makes Long Beach a special place. 
um, even though there is this big city, big bureaucracy, people truly do care for one another and want the best. What is, um, we, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up momentarily. I do, I do have to get this question in just for, just for our, our publisher here. <laughs> his his seven-year-old <laughs> son. <laughs> David, that's, not, that, 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 that's an abuse of power, David. You're, you're cutting the line. <laughs> he insisted, Aaron, this kid is actually very bright. He insisted that I ask uh, where he can find some more of those lo logic riddles that you've been doing or the logic game that you've been doing. <laughs> yeah, so the, the game I presented, when I substitute in classrooms and visit classrooms, I always play a game called NIM, N-I-M, and it's a, it's a logic game. It has three sets, seven in the first set, five in the second, and then third. What I forgot to do, which is bad teaching, I forgot to explain um, the rules, okay? So, but this young man obviously figured out the rules. The rule is that you can erase from uh, one set, you can erase the entire set or any number in that set. So one to seven, for example, in the first set. And the last person to erase loses. So I do plan to do other videos on that, and I'll post some of these games. Okay. As, as, a, as a teacher, I love math and science, and I would do all these things. Um, but there is a way. I've had kids who have won 35 straight games because there's a way to win. Um, and this kid, uh, your publisher son, sounds like he's one of them, who knows how to figure out the strategy because it's a game of strategy. Right. What, what is the one thing that you would – um, hope people come away with or know, or what is the, what is the one thing that's most important as far as you're concerned that most people know right now? Yeah, I'm going to say this. Um, the most important thing for me is that parents have to love and hug their kids, let them know it's going to be okay, lower the stress model, and there's going to be life after this, okay, for all levels, whether they're young, middle, or, or seniors. To our teachers and everything, continue to do your best. Don't, we have so many overachievers. Lower that down. Do not stress out um, because I'm amazed by what people are doing and we will provide more supports. But the most important thing, take this opportunity and enjoy the time that we've all been given. Learning is about exploring, is about, you know, if you take the world, um, the kindergarten, which in German means child's garden. This is what we need to look at. I mean, be creative at home. Do these science lessons at home. But don't worry that you don't get everything done. You know, this is going to be okay. And you heard that from the superintendent. So uh, it's okay. Yeah. Anything else, Mike? No, I think that's it, Chris. Thank you so much for your time. I know uh, I know you're sitting on tons of free time right now, so we, we appreciate you. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, I'm in Hawaii right now. So. Yeah. Well, we'd love to have you back in a couple of weeks. Like Mike said, I know this, this all this stuff is changing so fast. So thank you so much for joining us. And thank um, you and thank you for the support of our community. So. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we will pick up again with our live chats next Monday. We've got a full slate next week. Um, we're going to have a pastor on to talk next week is Holy Week. So we're going to have a pastor on on Tuesday to talk about that. We're also on Thursday going to be partnering up with the Daily 49er. We're going to have Jane Close Connolly on to speak, uh, answer questions on Thursday. So um, more to come and thanks for tuning in.